Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. This is section 2.3 which deals with lines. The first thing we're going to look at is slope, the finding the slope of the line. And the, what slope tells us is the average rate of change between any two points. Uh, it, it's also described as this equation right here. Hopefully we've seen that before. The change in y of two points divided by the change in x of two points. Uh, this denotion here is delta y, which just means change, and we find change by finding a difference, and delta over delta x. Uh, in some aspects, it's been described as rise over run, rise being our y, how high to high, how low, and run being how far left or right. If we look at this graph of this line here in red, we can see that there are two points denoted we can find the slant or steepness of this line and define it as slope. What's the change in y over the change in x? If we look at these points, I'm just going to label them here. This point here is negative 2 in the x and positive 5 in the y. This point here is positive 3 in the x and 0 in the y. It's right on the x-axis. So if we want to find the slope of this line, or its steepness, we can use any variation of this, preferably this one. And I'm going to use those two points I denoted here. So I'm going to say, all right, well, let's, let's call this point 1 and this point 2. And it really doesn't matter which point that you choose to be 1 and which one you choose to be 2. I could have switched the order. You'll get the same result when you simplify, as long as you're consistent. Now, if we look here, you notice the y and x from the same point are lined up with each other. Make sure you do that each time. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, OK, my y value of point 2 is 0 minus the y value of the first point, 5, over the x value of point 2 that I denoted as point 2 minus the x value of the other point. Now notice. We want to be aware of signs so that we don't make any sign errors. And on the top, I get 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 3 minus a negative 2 is 3 plus 2, which is a positive 5. And when we simplify that, we get negative 1. The slope of this is negative 1. Well, that tells me a lot of information. Negative tells me it decreases as we go from left to right. And if we look at the line, as we move from left to right, we see that the line is going down. Uh, had this been a positive value, it would tell us the line is going up. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And again, I just want to make sure you understand this. And I'll actually do it up here. It doesn't matter which way we place the points, as long as we're consistent and make sure that the values line up properly. What if I called this point 2? Well, the y value is 5 minus the other y value of 0 over the x value minus the other x value. Now you notice they look different, but the 5 is over the negative 2, just like the 5 is over the negative 2 here. The 0 is over the 3. The 0 is over 3. So I'm consistent with where I place my points. 5 minus 0 is 5. Negative 2 minus 3 more is negative 5. And when we simplify that, we still get negative 1, so we can see that it doesn't change its value. But you must be consistent. You can't switch x's and y's without switching the other value. So be consistent. All right, let's talk a little bit uh, about graphing lines. Let's graph another line here. It says graph the point 2, 1 with a slope of 4. Well, this is all the information I need in order to graph a line. If I know the point 2, 1, and because this is in green, I'm going to switch markers here. If I know this point 2, 1 over 2 and up 1, that's this value right here, and it has a slope of 4. Well, the slope tells me something very important. Any number can be represented as a rational expression, a fraction. 4 over 1 is still equal to 4. This tells me that the change in y is 4 over the change in x of 1. So if I go 4 positive in y, 1, 2, 3, 4, and over to the positive direction 1 in x, right to here, that's where I'll find the next point of my line. So up 4 and over 1. Or 
I could do it this way. Because negative 4 divided by negative 1 is the same thing as a positive 4. I could go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and back 1. And you notice, no matter how many times I do this, every point that I move to is going to be in a nice straight line. So I can actually graph this. And you notice it's a very steep line. Well, a slope of 4 means it's increasing very fast. So we can see, yep, that is a very steep slope. And it's positive, positive 4. As we move from left to right, it's going in the positive y direction. All right, let's discuss a little bit more about slope. Here we have slope, which is just our denotion in algebra, m. m greater than 0. Well, that just means that our slope is positive. A positive slope increases as we look left to right. So this is going up as we move left to right. A slope less than 0, we're decreasing. We're going down as we move from left to right. Uh, some other denotations that we want to look at is, what if the slope is 0? Well, that means it's a horizontal line. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, so I'll just wait. Uh, and then the slope of being undefined. What if x never changes? So these are our two variations of horizontal and vertical lines, which we'll talk about later in the notes here. But I want you to pay extra close attention to this. A positive slope is increasing left to right. A negative slope is decreasing left to right. So just the sign of the slope tells us something about it. All right, let's move on to point slope, which is another variation of the equation for slope. We've just seen this equation. Now notice it's a little bit different. I didn't put any value uh, or subscript for the, this y and this x. Because what we're going to do is we're just going to algebraically change this equation around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the y terms by themselves and the x terms on the other side. Essentially, we're just going to clear a fraction. And we know how to do that because we've done that from uh, solving equations, because this does have an equal sign. What we do to one side, we can do to the other. So essentially, I'm just multiplying by the LCD. This is my denominator. I'm going to multiply it through. Well, here, my denominators cancel, leaving me with y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. The reason why I did this to this equation is because if you know this equation, you don't have to really memorize a new one. Just bring the x values over with m. And this is point slope equation. It is important to know the name of the equation for this reason. It's called the point slope because if we know just one point and we have the slope, point slope, we can use this equation to actually find the simplified equation of a line. So you can either memorize this, or you can know it's just a variation of your slope equation. So here's our question. It says, use point slope to find the equation of the line passing through these two points. Well, given two points, I know I can find slope, because I can find the change in y over the change in x. And I'm going to do that right here. And I'm going to call this point 2 and this point 1. Again, it's arbitrary as long as you're consistent. The change in y is 5 minus 4. So my slope is going to be 5 minus 4 over 2 minus a negative 3. And I'm just going to simplify that. Minus a negative is 2 plus 3. 5 minus 4 is 1. 2 plus 3 is 5. So now I know what the slope is. The slope is 1 fifth. For every one change in the positive direction of y, I'm going to go 5 over in x, 5 to the right in x, positive. Now, we're not done with the question because it asks us to find the equation of the line. Well, now with the information I have, I know the slope, and I have some points, point slope. So I know how to find point slope because we have the equation. I'm just going to plug in the information. And again, when it comes to these points, it really doesn't matter which point I use. I'm going to use this point just because the values are positive. Again, it's arbitrary. So y minus the y value from the point. Well, in this case, it's 5. Equals the slope, which I found to be 1 fifth, times 
x minus the x value from the point, x minus 2. Now, I could leave it like this, or I could do some simplifying. I could distribute the 1 fifth, and I will do that. y minus 5 equals 1 fifth x minus 2 fifths. And I could take it a little further. Let's get y by itself, and we'll talk about this form of the equation in the next uh, slide here. I'm adding 5 to both sides, 1 fifth x, negative 2 fifths plus 5. And let me just write it like this. 5 in terms of fifths, just changing the denominator, would be 25 fifths. So 25 fifths is 5. 25 divided by 5, right? Minus the 2 would give me 23 fifths, a positive 23 fifths. So y equals 1 fifth x plus 23 fifths. Now if we take that information, essentially let's look at this. What did I do to that equation that made it different? Well, this is my point slope. Let's just, for a moment, consider this point right here, where x is 0. If we recall from the previous video, or from our previous algebra, when x is 0, we're finding the y-intercept. So if we have the y-intercept, let's just put that in here. y minus b, my y value, equals m times x minus the x point. And in this case, it's 0. So if we simplify that, and let's just do that right here, we really don't need that because if we distribute m to 0, we have 0. So I have y minus b equals m times x. Well, let's get y by itself. y equals mx, add b to both sides, plus b. This is a different form of this equation, which was a variation of slope. And we can see that this has different information. We have the slope, and now we have the y-intercept. So if we look at what I did here, I essentially solved this for y, which gave me the y-intercept of positive 23 fifths. This is called slope-intercept. It's nice to know the name of this equation, because it tells you which form of the equation to use. If I'm told something about the slope, and I'm told where it intercepts the y-axis, because this is the y-intercept, I can simply plug it into this equation and be done with it. I know the slope. I know the intercept. It's now in slope-intercept form. So here's your quiz. It says, find the equation of the line passing through these two points, and show your work, and use either or. Use this equation, or use the point slope, and simplify it to this. But make sure your final answer is in slope-intercept form, this form right here. All right, so either or, just show your work. All right, let's take a look. I had mentioned that we would talk a little bit more about horizontal lines and vertical lines, and that's what we're going to see here. If we look at this line up here on the graph, we see that it's horizontal, just like the horizon. It goes straight across. Well, this horizontal line has a, an equation, y equals b. Now, if we ask ourselves, well, what's the slope? What is the steepness of the line? Is it going up? Or is it coming down? Well, it's doing neither. The change in y over the change in x is essentially 0. Because if we look at this, the y value never changes. And that's what this equation tells me. y equals some number. No matter what x is, this value will never change. y is constant. So if y is constant, we have 0 as our slope. And I'm just going to define that a little bit more. The change in y is 0. And the change in x is whatever two points we choose. Maybe I say, well, what happens between x being 0 and x being 5? The change in x is 5. Well, anything uh, goes into 0, 0 times. So we get 0 there. So horizontal line is always of the form y equals some number. And its slope is always 0. Well, what about a vertical line? If we look at a vertical line, it's defined similarly by saying, x equals a number. Well, that is this value right here. x never changes. So we have some point, some value of x being a, and an intercept at y equals 0 here. If x never changes, let's for a moment explore that slope. 
We have some change in y depending on if I choose, well, maybe from this value to that value, there's some change in y. But what's the change in x? Well, x never changes, so there is no change in x. Well, what happens when we divide by 0? Well, when we divide by 0, we get something that's undefined. So if you're ever told that you have an undefined slope, you should know that right away that's a vertical line. x never changes. Our slope is undefined. Here, the y never changed, so our slope was 0. All right, let's move over here to one more variation of uh, an equation form. And this is called general form. Some call it standard form, but either or, they're interchangeable terms. If we look at this equation, 3x plus 2y equals 6, we could solve this for y and have it in slope-intercept form, as we've just seen. But sometimes we're asked to put our equations in general form. Essentially, that's keeping our x's and y's on one side and keeping any constants to the other. Well, if we look at this, a, b, and c are just numbers. They're the coefficients. And a and b can't be equal to 0 because if uh, a is 0 in this case, now we have uh, y equals a constant, which is our horizontal line. Or we have, if b is 0, we have x equals a constant, which is a vertical line. So this is general form. What if we were asked to graph this? Well, we could graph this by building a t-table of x and y values and finding two or three points and seeing that, yep, this is a nice straight line. Or we could solve this for y. That way we'll know the slope, and we will know at least one point, the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I just subtracted 3x using my rules of equality, and then I'm going to divide everything by 2. y equals negative 3 halves x, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now that I have it in slope-intercept form, I can graph this equation because I know this point, 0, 3, my y-intercept. When x is 0, y is 3. And then I can use the slope which tells me the change in y over the change in x. Well, from this point, I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 2, 2 to the right, because it's a positive 2, 1, 2. And I could continue doing that from this point, down 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right, 2, 1, 2. And we see all of these points are in a nice straight line. Even though my line wasn't straight, you'll have to trust me on that. So we can see we were able to graph the line. And putting it into this form gives me the point and the slope. So we can utilize that. Let's explore a little bit more about lines in this right here. What we have here are parallel and perpendicular lines. Well, first of all, let's define parallel. Parallel, if we take a look at y equals 2x, we know, hey, this slope is positive, so it's something that's increasing. And this slope is also positive, so it's a line that's increasing from left to right. But what we notice is they have the same slope. If you were to put this into a calculator, you would see a line with a positive slope. And you would see another line with that exact same slope. Notice these are the same. This one's only shifted down one. It's one factor lower. So if we look at this, these lines are parallel, which means they're never going to intersect one another. Parallel lines never intersect. So if we're told that two lines are parallel, we can just say, hey, if I know one of the slopes, I know both of the slopes. Parallel lines have the same slope. Well, what if we have perpendicular lines? Well, perpendicular just means that they cross at 90 degrees. And as an example, I'll just graph it right now. If we were to graph this, we would see two lines that intersect at 90 degrees. These are perpendicular lines. Another word that you might hear as you advance in uh, your algebras is orthogonal. Orthogonal is the same thing. It's a synonym to perpendicular. So if we look at these, how are these? slopes related? Well, they are negative reciprocals. Essentially what that means is if we take the product of the two slopes, we get negative 1. Well, let's explore that right here. If I take 2 
times a negative one half. Well, what's half of two? It's one. A positive times a negative is a negative one. So there we have it. So if you're told that you two lines are perpendicular, if you know one of the slopes, you just take its reciprocal and change its sign. If I'm told that there's a line that is uh, perpendicular to this slope, well, I take its reciprocal, 2 over 1 is 2, and change its sign, I get a positive 2. So keep that in mind. The easiest way is to say, let's just take its reciprocal and change its sign. All right, <clears throat> so let's do an example. It says, find the equation of a line. Excuse me. Find the equation of a line through the point 3, negative 5, and parallel, just so that you know, or excuse me, perpendicular. This is the symbol for perpendicular. It just shows two lines at 90 degrees. So through 3, negative 5, perpendicular to this line, y equals 1 third x minus 2. Let's do that example over here on the chalkboard. I'm going to write y equals 1 third x minus 2. And I want to find the equation of a line that's perpendicular. Now, just so you can see it a little better in the video, that's the symbol for perpendicular instead of spelling the whole word out. Well, if I know that, I'm going to find the slope of my second line. It, take the reciprocal, 3 over 1, and change its sign. Well, that's just going to be negative 3. So now I know the slope. Well, what else do I know? From the given problem, it says it has to pass through the point 3, negative 5. So if we just assess what information we were able to pull out of this question, I have a point and I have slope. Let's use the point-slope equation. y minus the y value, which is negative 5, equals the slope, negative 3, times x minus the x value, which is 3. And now I can just do some simplification and put it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So this is going to be a positive y plus 5, because of the two negatives. I'm going to distribute this value here, negative 3x. And this would be positive 9. And finally, just get y by itself. That'll put it into slope-intercept form. Subtract 5 from both sides. And I'm going to write it right here. y equals negative 3x plus 4. Just subtract 5 from both sides. This is the equation of the line that's perpendicular to the given line and passes through this point. Just to check my work, I could take this value and plug it in here, plug in the x for 3 and this for negative 5, and I'd find out that that would make it a true statement. So it's one way to check our work. Let's look at this example down here. It says, find the equation of the line through this point and parallel to the same line. Well, parallel, and this is the symbol for parallel, just shows two parallel lines to the same equation. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this. And since my eraser is too far away, all right, so now we're looking for parallel that passes through the same point. Well, what does parallel tell me about slope? If they're parallel, they have the same slope, the same steepness. They're never going to cross, which means they're going to have the same slope. So again, I have a slope of 1 third and a point of 3, negative 5. I'm going to use point-slope equation. y minus the y value, and we'll take that shortcut because we already know that minus a negative is positive. The slope of 1 third times x minus the x value. Now, if I distribute this, I'm going to get 1 third x. 1 third times negative 3 is negative 1. So I have y plus 5 equals 1 third x minus 1. Subtract 4 from both sides, and I get a final answer of y equals 1 third x. Subtracting 5 will give me negative 6. This is the equation of a line. And notice it's different than the one we saw before because the slope is different. Also, the intercept is different. This line is parallel to this line. Okay, One way to check the work is 
plug that in. You already know they're the same slope. Make sure you did all your work right, didn't make any sign errors. This has been section 2.3 for college algebra. Thank you for watching.